Welcome to Frontline News from the University of Maryland School of Medicine News Center. I'm Larry Roberts. Coming up, the life-saving benefits of mobile drug treatment and telemedicine. But first, an important study to understand noise-induced hearing loss so that new therapies can be developed. After exposing mice to loud noise, Dr. Rona Herzano's research team observed changes in RNA levels, depending on the cell type they studied. And then different groups focused on different areas of the inner ear to really understand what changes in gene expression happen in every single cell type. For example, our group studied uh, the changes in the sensory cells and the supporting cells. Another group studied the lateral wall, which is like the BGNE, the electric factory of the ear. Another group studied the neurons of the ear. And then there was another group that studied the immune cells of the ear. The data was analyzed in collaboration with bioinformatics experts at Tel Aviv University, published in the journal Cell Reports, and shared with the research community through an online atlas called GEAR, the Gene Expression Analysis Resource. The results of the study were fascinating because the first thing we found was that there is obviously a response that is shared across the inner ear. It mainly has to do with immune-related genes, not immune cells, that go up in all different cell types, and we were even able to identify candidate regulators for these changes. But what was more interesting was that the bigger changes were specific to different cell types. And even in different regions of the ear, every separate cell type responded differently. The research team entered the gene expression trends into Drug Central, a database that can connect molecular responses with FDA-approved drugs. They've already identified several promising medications. The scale of the current study is unprecedented in the ear field. The conclusions are very, very promising and we're extremely excited about the work that is done right now in the lab to test the different therapeutics and find out whether they can indeed prevent noise-induced hearing loss. I'm very hopeful. Before the COVID pandemic, the School of Medicine began its mobile telemedicine program to provide treatment for opioid addiction in underserved rural areas. Now, a new study is attesting to the effectiveness of that program which has treated more than 200 patients on Maryland's eastern shore. You know, what brought you in to see us on, on the treatment van today? We did a chart review of all the first approximately 115 patients that we saw on the, on the van and primary outcome measures for uh, the treatment of opioid use disorders are retention and treatment and continued opioid use. And what we discovered was that our patients were doing as well as what individuals did in brick and mortar um, built uh, treatment programs in, in other studies that have been published. Approximately 60% of our patients were still in treatment at three months. Um, and of those 60% uh, of the patients were still in treatment, about 90% had stopped using opioids. The mobile treatment van proved to be a critical resource during the pandemic when brick and mortar treatment facilities were forced to close. We were able to keep treatment going during COVID by utilizing the van. We would have people wait outside, they were they could socially distance, stay in their cars, and just have one person coming at a time. So uh, the van actually was a really effective treatment strategy during the COVID um, outbreak. Dr. Weintraub says there are plans to expand the program to more counties and provide mobile treatment for infectious diseases. And that's Frontline News. I'm Larry Roberts. I hope you'll join us again in two weeks. <music>